The Financial Sector Adjustment Company, or FINSAC, was created by the People's National Party, and its intervention was supposed to save Jamaica from economic disaster. But instead, it left us with long-term wounds. Even my children them sometimes them confused because they never used to this kind of life. After working hard for several years to build his dream house, he was thrown out in an instant. The FinSact entrepreneur claims his house, which was valued at between 9 and 11 million dollars, was offloaded by FinSAC for just three and a half million dollars. By shutting down numerous banks, consolidating them into a single entity, and selling that entity to foreign interests, FinSAC reshaped the Jamaican economy, often to the detriment of local stakeholders. So in this video, we'll dive into the inception of FinSAC, the economic conditions leading to its creation, the banks it shut down, the scandals and lawsuits that followed, and how these actions culminated in the consolidation and eventual sale of Jamaican banks to foreign interests. Like the video and let's proceed. Economic Boom and Bust The late 1980s and early 1990s, a time when Jamaica was basking in economic glory. The economy was booming, life was good, and prosperity was the order of the day. But like all good things, it was too good to last. By the early 1990s, Jamaica was hit by high interest rates, rampant inflation, and a classic case of economic mismanagement. The Bank of Jamaica's reserves were as dry as a desert, and the once glorious banking environment was teetering on the brink. Between 1991 and 1995, inflation averaged over 40% annually and interest rates soared above 42%. Now talk about a recipe for a disaster. The creation of FinSAC. Now enter FinSAC, or a knight in shining armor, or so we would have thought. Established in 1997, under the watchful eye of the People's National Party, or PNP, FinSAC was supposed to be the hero that would save us from financial doom. Their mandate? Stabilize the financial sector that was collapsing faster than a house of cards. But instead of saving the day, FinSAC's interventions left Jamaica with long-term scars that still haunt us today. Mr. Poiser is a real estate developer who says he borrowed $9 million to help fund the housing development. But like other entrepreneurs bitten by the FinSAC bug, he saw his debt ballooning out of control. Now, let's take a look at the first wave of closures. One of the first victims of FinSAC's rescue mission was Century National Bank, led by Don Crawford. Century was accused of mismanagement and politically motivated actions led to the bank's assets being frozen and taken over. Century National Bank's closure was just the beginning of FinSAC's takeover spree. Yes, I've indicated, well, for firstly, FinSAC is indeed the big, the big black bear that we had never seen before. They're like the great white shark and, the, and it's hungry. And uh, they have overlooked all aspects of principle, decency, honesty, transparency, integrity, and they have maintained a very vicious profile from the very beginning. What they did the century in itself. Uh, without prejudice to the other victims, it's a colossal disaster. We are undoubtedly the biggest victims. FinSAC did not stop there. Their list of casualties grew to include Eagle Commercial Bank, Workers' Savings and Loan Bank, Citizens Bank, Island Victoria Bank, Citizens Merchant Bank, Corporate Merchant Bank, and Island Life Merchant Bank. These banks, already on life support due to severe liquidity problems, and deposit runs were put out of their misery by FinSAC's intervention. But who needs stability when you really have chaos, don't? Here are some of the businesses and individuals affected by FinSAC. The ripple effects of FinSAC's actions extended far beyond the banks themselves. Countless businesses and individuals found themselves caught in the crossfire of the financial sector's collapse. The businesses, Eagle Financial Network This conglomerate, which included Eagle Commercial Bank and other financial services, 
was dismantled under Finsac's watch. The disintegration of Eagle's businesses resulted in significant job losses and a blow to investor confidence. Workers' Savings and Loan Bank Workers' savings and loan bank closure affected numerous small and medium enterprises that relied on its services for loans and financial support. The sudden unavailability of credit stifled business growth and expansion plans. Island Life Insurance Company One of the largest insurers in Jamaica, Island Life's financial stability was undermined by FinSAC's interventions. The company struggled to honor policies and faced a loss of trust among policyholders. Individuals affected by FinSAC's action Don Crawford The founder of Central National Bank, Crawford, faced allegations of mismanagement and saw his life's work dismantled. He was left to battle legal accusations and attempt to clear his name amidst a storm of controversy. Carl Wright The head of Eagle Financial Network witnessed the disintegration of his company's financial empire. He faced not only the loss of his business, but also reputational damage and legal challenges. Also, ordinary Jamaicans were affected. The broader Jamaican public, including depositors, employees, and small business owners, suffered immensely. Many saw their savings wiped out, their jobs lost, and their businesses falter due to the financial instability caused by FinSAC's actions. Lawsuits and Scandals And let's not forget the drama. Don Crawford and other bank owners weren't going down without a fight. They alleged conspiracy, unfair treatment, and politically motivated actions. Lawsuits flew left and right, painting a picture of a financial sector mired in scandal and mismanagement. However, we can't have a financial crisis without a little bit of courtroom drama, though. Consolidation into Union Bank In a move that was supposed to bring stability, FinSA merged the assets of the failing banks into Union Bank of Jamaica in 2000. This Frankenstein's monster of a bank was supposed to be stronger and more resilient. But, as you guessed, it wasn't. The consolidation process was a mess, and the confidence in the banking sector continued to plummet. Sale to RBTT In 2001, the Union Bank of Jamaica was sold to the Royal Bank of Trinidad and Tobago, RBTT. Critics saw this as the ultimate betrayal, a loss of Jamaican financial sovereignty as control of our banks was handed over to foreign interests. Because nothing screams economic independence like selling your banks to another country. Hmm. Impact on the economy The aftermath of FinSAC's actions was a far-reaching economic disaster. Job losses, reduced access to credit, and a massive loss of confidence in the financial system were just the tip of the iceberg. Entrepreneurs and investors watched their fortunes evaporate, and the ripple effects of these actions are still felt today. The entrepreneurial spirit of Jamaicans was crushed, and a culture of risk aversion took root among new generations of professionals. FinSAC was created by the People's National Party and its intervention was supposed to save Jamaica from economic disaster. But instead, it left us with long-term wounds. By shutting down numerous banks, consolidating them into a single entity, and then selling that entity to foreign interests, FinSAC reshaped the Jamaican economy, often to the detriment of local stakeholders. I really did have to repeat that. The legacy of these actions underscores the complexities and challenges of managing a national financial crisis without causing long-term harm to the economy and its citizens. So much for the night in shining armor. At the moment though, Jamaica is experiencing exceptional growth, but one step in the wrong direction and it could all come happening again. Thank you for watching. And if you don't like the video, you know, I feel like it. Bless. Because although I came into the party through Dr. Omar Davis, because I knew him in the financial sector, where I had been like one of the leading corporate lawyers in Jamaica. Okay, so
We don't come so we get no money out of politics. We don't make my money already. We are big in the lion's culture, big in the investment banker.